Right, so the goal is oversight. I mean, what you're fighting for is to find out what the U.S. government is doing with this UAP issue, with these exploitation programs, which we now know exist. It's an arrogant bunch. Some of these folks in Congress, some of them in, in the Pentagon and other places, I mean, they pat you on the head and say, well, you really just don't need to know. I mean, literally, that's what they tell presidents. And with this new speaker, if it's okay, if I can talk a little bit about him. Secrets, cover-ups, and strange phenomena. UFOs and ideas that challenge reality itself. All these mysteries, all this time. Are we ever gonna get to the bottom of these? My name is George Knapp. I dig into news stories that others can't or won't. I'm Jeremy Corbell, and for some reason, people tell me things they probably shouldn't. And this is Weaponized. Weaponized. This is Weaponized. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? Good, George. How you doing, man? I'm dying. Uh, oh, no. Tell me more. Well, I traveled out of the country and I made the mistake of going somewhere without you as my trusty companion. <laughs> I got what? sick. I got oh, sick. Oh, you got so, sick. What, what, what are they allowing you out of the country for? Yeah, I know. It's It was a mistake all the way around. Uh, it won't happen again. But hold anyway, on, hold people on. are wondering tell, about tell us, my- tell us the curse. You got to tell us. Tell us a little bit about the travel curse. What happened? Well, I have a travel curse, as you know. It is documentable. Um, I do not recommend flying into a hurricane. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> I recommend that everyone take travel on luggage because uh, if you travel with me, your luggage is going to get lost. And there's a good chance you'll catch some kind of a Mexican flu as well. So um, that that's all I'm going to say. But, but I don't think this is a vacation. You were no. investigating UFO stuff, right? Yeah, this is a UFO. This is a UFO trip. But uh, anyway, I apologize in advance if my voice is, is bad. It gets worse through the course of this podcast, as people will learn here soon enough. I got to figure that Dave Grush's uh, ears are ringing. A lot of people talking about him this week, right? Yeah, man, I I noticed that. Uh, you know, we haven't. This is we we took a week off because you were traveling. So here we are back, and yeah, man, the guy has just taken so many shots. Um, there are false statements being made about him by officials and government. You know, we should clear some of that up today, to the best of our knowledge. But yeah, man, just as a human being, and and as now as like a friend, it it really sucks to see false information when someone can't really defend themselves. They're kind of muzzled. I, I will say this, that's not, I, I predicted this before, and I'm, I'm telling you now, that muzzle is coming off in a big way. So you're going to see that. Good. I can't wait. Uh, you know, I, I, what is with Dave anyway? He gets all these invitations to cool events, arrow through a spring fling, and they had their summertime barn dance and barbecue, and Dave didn't even respond to these invitations. <laughs> So let's get into that. Let's get into the lies and falsehoods that that have been reported in the media. I think it's important for people to to have clarity on that. But first, let's just, you know, some bullet point things. So Arrow, finally, finally, Arrow did what they were mandated to do, and they created a reporting page. So now people can go there to the Arrow website, and they can report their information about UFOs, UAPs, that kind of thing. However, you're not you, you can't submit anything classified so so they're they're it's it's very strange man it's like this normal reporting page but they don't allow you to submit anything that would be classified so and plus people don't trust arrow at this point for good reason what do you think about that what do you think about the new arrow website reporting page it looks like it was built in the 1994 well why didn't they go down to like the, the local junior high school and get some 15 year old kid to build their website would have taken him about 35 minutes. I imagine they had 15 different committee meetings, had to go through a bunch of policy advisory councils and, and talk it over for six months. And even then it's, it leaves a lot to be desired, right? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I hate, you know, having to be so negative about it. Like I'm glad there's a reporting page, but it just, it just seems so easy and obvious. I'm glad they've achieved that. But what they've done prior to putting up the UFO reporting page on Arrow is they've completely eroded all public trust that was done by Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. I'm just going to call it as I see it. When somebody lies and they, not only do they lie, but they, they publicly try to shame heroes, people that come forward under oath of Congress and, and 
tell the American public that they've been lied to, that there's these reverse engineering programs. And then he writes this, I mean, it's like a half drunk letter that he put out through LinkedIn or something like that. How can you not see that as a problem when you're asking whistleblowers to come to you that you write a letter like he did? If people don't remember that, they should look it up. Just absolutely uh, just crapping on David Grush and his testimony in front of Congress. It, it's unbelievable to me that you then think people would come to you. Yeah, that late night rant thing, that was really weird. He does it on a, a personal site, get makes it very personal. His remarks seemed a little bit unhinged. Why is there no blowback for him in, in his professional responsibility? It's so incredibly unprofessional to single out somebody for a personal attack do it on your personal site, and there's no consequences for it. And then expect other whistleblowers to come forward and share sensitive information that could uh, could ruin their lives? Good gosh. You know what happens to people like Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick is when they do stuff like that, they get promoted. And so what what we're seeing here is, so first of all, the cat's out of the bag. You and I knew about this. You know, we, we had recorded this interview that you'll people will hear earlier or they'll hear a little later, but we recorded it earlier uh, and we're going to show that today. But we were aware that there was this website, right, that showed at Oak Ridge his email address and that he was essentially going to be moving over there. It's not on Wayback Time Machine. I checked that. So you and I had this knowledge and we looked into it and it turns out, yeah, it, it seems like he's moving over to Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Now, the thing about Oak Ridge National Laboratory is other than now, by the way, they've taken down that page now that it became public and, and it's been reported on. They took it down as if it didn't exist, which is hilarious. And and Chris Sharp, uh, a friend of ours and a friend of this show, he actually got a quote from Susan Goh, which was, Dr. Kirkpatrick remains the director of Arrow. He is not currently employed by Oak Ridge National Laboratory. We have no aero personnel announcements to make at this time. So basically, it's like, yeah, he's moving over there. He's out of the job. He's moving on. He's getting a promotion. But Oak Ridge, George, does that ring a bell to you? I mean, doesn't isn't that kind of uh, intimately connected with the Tel Institute and the DOD? It is. It, it's all they're all part of the same team. And if you look right. back at the history of UFOs and nukes, I mean, it, I can see a lot of reasons why Kirkpatrick would be great for that position. The idea is we reported six months ago he was gone. You know, it was he was not going to be not going to be staying in that job beyond the, the end of this year. And, and now it appears to be coming to fruition. And it's a surprise to absolutely no one. I think that Dr. Kirkpatrick probably thought that was going to be a fun job when he took it. Boy, I'll be the UFO czar of America. It hasn't been fun for him. It's been a pain in the ass. And I'm sure he's going to be glad to get the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah. So Arrow is worse than Project Blue Book. You were right all along, George. It's just a whitewash. It's really sad to see. We'll get into some of the lies and falsehoods that he recently said. But look, I we can confirm for people, you and I know that there are other candidates already being vetted to take his role. Now, is that going to help public trust with Arrow? Are we going to get somebody in the position to run Arrow that not only we can trust, but is honest with the American public with the mandate of being honest with the American public? I don't know if a change of guard is going to do anything. I don't know if you and I will recommend that people go report into Arrow with information. It, they've been coming to us and it's kind of better that they do. We have other people we can pass information forward to, which we do. And um, I don't know, man, I just don't know if this is going to make a big difference that Dr. Kirkpatrick is going to be ousted and, and move into his new cushy job. I don't know. But I would know, have to say that, it can't get worse. I mean, they right. couldn't possibly have somebody worse than him in that position. So if you at least get someone with a sense of curiosity, that's an improvement. I suspect whoever has that job is going to be handcuffed by higher ups. We've said it a dozen times or more. The keepers of the secrets are not going to give this stuff up, not without a fight, not unless they are dragged kicking and screaming out into the sunlight. So it's up to the public and Congress to keep the pressure on, keep the pedal to the metal. I, I like the way you think, man. You're right. I mean, there are some candidates that I think would be amazing to have that position that you know we're aware of, but let's see what happens. Who wins that lottery if, if it's something you want to win? Um, but look, You've heard one name, right? You've heard one name for sure? 
uh, a couple names for sure, uh, but I, I don't, you know, I would call that uh, less than high confidence. Let's see, let's see who, who gets that uh, position. I can't, I don't think you or I should name a name. Let's just right. see what happens. Right. So let, let's talk about real quick the, the Drive article that came out on, on Halloween called Balloons, No UFOs, Found by Satellites, Shoot Down Videos Coming, says Arrow Chief. I mean, it's like a cute title. And look, it would be nice if some of these videos of the shoot down attempts were indeed brought forward to the public. Uh, you and I, I think we're, we're very confident that if those videos had value to the public, they would come out, meaning I, you don't see anything in those videos. Uh, and, and there's reasons for that. I, I would be very curious to see what Arrow brings forward if they do with those videos, because because time and time again, they like to show us things that are resolved, not UAP, but things that they can say, well, this is an airplane. This is a balloon. OK, great. So I'm just very curious if that is true in that article that uh, there's going to be more video put out by Arrow. Great. More video is always great, as long as it's not just like the same stuff that we know exists. So, so let's see. But in that article, George, there, there were three things that, that were said that I want to identify. So one of the quotes was, last time the two spoke, meaning David Grush and Dr. Kirkpatrick, was five years ago. That was directly stated in that article. You and I know that to be absolutely 100% a lie. You know, Dave has been in in-person meetings with Dr. Kirkpatrick, as well as phone and video calls, even classified video calls about UAP. That was Dave's job. His job for, for, for the NGA was to study and look at the UAP issue. So Dave, I know, emailed him and his staff a whole bunch about UAP and people maybe through FOIA could find that in like what's called JWIX emails or like a classified email server. People should be hunting for that. I know people are. That's really good because that is a flat out lie that they haven't spoken within five years. Two more points I want to make. Um, another quote from the article, we have extended an invitation at least four or five times for him, Dave, to come in over the last eight months or so, and that has been declined. Well, that is false. David Grush made a public statement that has come around, and the public statement was that I have no emails or phone calls from, from Arrow, and I know that to be true. So it'll be really interesting to see when someone like Dr. Kirkpatrick makes these bold lies that weren't really supposed to be printed, um, You know, can they be verified that they are lies? So Dave's made a public statement. And by the way, his, his ICIG complaint, it needs to be adjudicated. If, if Arrow wants anything about what David Grush has said, they should go right over to the ICIG and ask them, can I have that information? I don't think they're hungry for it. I, I don't think Dr. Kirkpatrick is hungry for that information officially. Last thing, it's a lie. In that article, he says, I currently have no evidence. This is Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. I currently have no evidence of any program having ever existed to do any sort of reverse engineering of a sort of extraterrestrial UAP. Now, we can mince words and stuff, but you and I personally know that Dr. Kirkpatrick has been testified to. What do you think about that? What I think is a lie. There is a paper trail that shows that it happened. Um, there is not a paper trail to show that... Uh, that Dr. Kirkpatrick or anyone at Arrow has ever invited Dave Grush to go ahead and speak the four or five times that he's referring to. Now that that should be documentable. There should be a paper trail for that. Either it was an email or it was a letter or it was a phone call. And I know that there are people who have filed the FOIA requests already to see where that paper trail is, but I think that's gonna be proven to be demonstrably false. I mean, maybe the dog ate the invitation, you know, it never got there, or it got mixed up with the, as I said, the invitation to the, the spring fling or something like that, but that is documentably false. You mentioned earlier about Arrows saying that they're gonna release uh, some videos. Oh boy, can't wait for that. We can tell you right now, flat out, they are not going to ever release a video of a truly anomalous UAP, something that is not yet explained. They will release balloons. They will release planes. They will release stuff that is easily explainable and try to brush it off all over the table. But they are not going to release any of the good stuff. That will never happen. Uh, the fact that Dr. Kirkpatrick is so adamant in lying about what David Grush as the communication that they've had is, I think, a, another 
clear indication that he is out of there, that he's moving on. He doesn't need the job. He doesn't need the headaches. He doesn't mind lying to the public. And he knows that he can get away with it because, again, at this news conference, he makes these kinds of broad statements, no crash engineering, no crash retrieval, reverse engineering programs, no evidence, and knows that those people who are there in the room, the reporters, are not going to pin him down on. They didn't again. It's a very simple question to ask, and I think it's disappointing that we had yet another news event, a press event, where they didn't ask it. And, and so I think there's something we can so, – so what we're trying to explain here is that you're being lied to by Dr. Shankar Badger. That should be obvious. But you and I have – because we vetted Dave before, because we have contacts that are involved with you know the, the UAP issue within government, you and I can reveal something today – that we learned that just really puts a pin in all of this. It really is pointed is that it was easy for you and me to find out. And, and this is information I think people should know, which is that in May of 2022. So just last year there, we, we came into the information and validated that it's true, that there was a, a DOD IC classified UAP conference at what's called intelligence community campus, Bethesda. So ICC B. It's a SCIF auditorium. Okay, so imagine this. There was a, a classified UAP conference that was held in May of 2022 at Intelligence Community Campus Bethesda. At that conference, not only did Dave Gresh talk with Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, I mean, there's probably 200 witnesses that could see that, but David Grush was on a panel about UAP with Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. So just this idea that they've had no contact, no communication about UAP, there they are at this classified auditorium having a conference where they're on the same panel in May of 2022. I mean, that is astounding to me. When we ran into that information, now it is public. Like, that happened. So, you know, it kind of just shows you the duplicity and the two-faced and the weird stuff that Kirkpatrick is doing. I'd really love to hear from Chuck McCullough, Dave Grush's attorney. I'd love to have him address this idea of whether his client has been invited to speak with Arrow or not. That would carry a lot of weight. People don't want to believe Dave Grush. Okay, this guy was the inspector general for the intelligence community. It has an impeccable reputation. Let's ask him on the record if his client, if he or his client have received any invitations. You would think it would, it would likely go through him, or at least he'd know about it if it were true. There's somebody I want us to talk with. Uh, you know, someone we've talked with before, when we talk about these skiffs and going in them and trying to get more information, again, the pit bull for the UAP issue, that has been Congressman Burchett, Representative Burchett. And Representative Burchett has really done everything that he can to try to move this ball forward. And, you know, look, our friend, George Andy, from That UFO Podcast, he immediately was able to get um, Representative Burchett right when he kind of got out of that room onto his podcast and he got this little chunk. It was so good. And I really think Andy did an awesome job. Uh, luckily, we got uh, Representative Burchett to say that he'll jump on with us. So, so let's jump in with him and hear what it was like to go into that skiff and try to pry out some UFO information. So Representative Burchett, excited to have you here again. Thank you so much for taking the time. You know, you've been like a real pit bull and bulldog for the UFO UAP topic. And I've been frustrated lately, man. I heard you recently got that skiff you had been asking for. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. And we were we were briefed, um, and uh, or unbriefed, I guess. I don't know. Debriefed. I don't know what you want to call it. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't worth a flip. Uh, you know, I I keep thinking though we're we're peeling off that la layers of that onion. You and I have talked about that before. You, me, and George talked about that. Um, you know, we just get one step closer. And I, I said, and I, I tried to explain it to folks. I said, it's like when you're talking to these cats, they, it's like looking down the barrel of a 22 rifle, you know, they, that's all they know is that one little area. And they're probably not lying to me or misleading me intentionally, but all they know is that little parameter. And, you know, I've talked about many times about compartmentalization and that's, that's exactly what we endured. And, but what I was really glad about, I mean, I went in frustrated and I left, you know, I wasn't surprised. I left frustrated, but other members in both parties and, and in the, you know, 
can't talk about really about the contents, but but the reality was was that that both parties left very frustrated. And I think they, they sort of saw what I was putting up with um, throughout all this and the denial and, you know, and um, but anyway, and, and I was very glad that um, the people from both parties asked a really tough question. But, but my buddy Jared Moskowitz from um, from Florida, Democrat, he um, I was glad he was in there because he is a he's a man that. God gave him some kind of brain, man. I mean, he's a good attorney, I can see, but he was asking some very tough questions, and um, and and I could see the frustration on his face, and and I was glad of that because, as you all well know, this thing is is not like they're just going to go, oh, here it is, here it is, guys. Here's here's what Grush was talking about. We got it all. Here are the pictures. Here are the bodies. This is where it's happening. You know, hell, they're not going to do that. You and I know that, and and it's um, but it, but it. Every time we do that, the UFO community, I think, gets a little, little tighter, and um, we sort of the, the folks that are not, you know, that are just wanting a little flash in the pan, they kind of fall off the wayside, and that's fine. I, I dig that, but, but the folks that are, that are the true believers like us, they're, they're getting more and more um, refined, and, and they understand our frustration. So, Congressman, can you uh, set the table for us? Describe the scene. How many people were there? And also, was there some sort of a strict admonishment by DOD to warn the members of Congress not to talk about it? What would they say? Yeah, they always, it seems like, George, every time you go in the skiff, they give you this same song and dance. And I always, I remember when I first got to the, got to the Congress, I leaned over this elder Democrat and I said, so let me get this straight. I said, uh, if we miss this meeting, we can catch it all in about 30 minutes on CNN. He looked at me and said, no, Tim. And he said, in, in about 15 minutes, you'll catch it, not 30 minutes. So, you know, and I've always, um, and, and that's the way it, it goes down. They read you this thing or, or, you know, it's just given. And you go in there and it's like, it's a rectangular shaped room. Um, the bureaucrats are sitting up the head of the table and, and you know, and they've got their, whoever the suits are behind them, maybe maybe CIA, maybe NSA, maybe one of those quasi-governmental agencies, I don't know. Um, just so I guess they don't slip up or something comes out that they don't want out. And, uh, you know, and they told us several times that we did, you know, basically there was some confusion over whether we had the clearance to get certain information and things like that. And, uh, you know, and, and as a member of Congress, we're supposed to have those clearances. I don't, you know, we've, you and I, the three of us have talked about that many times, but, um, and I just, and, and they sort of asked me to kind of head it up. And so I just, you know, I, I went around the room and just called on people that wanted to ask questions and, uh, and everybody, um, from AOC to general Perry on our side was able to ask questions and, um, and leave the room frustrated. And I would, I would make a point every time when they would walk by me, I would look at them and give them a fist bump or say something. Democrats are mostly sitting on my right and the, and the Republicans mostly on my left over here. And, um, and everybody had that same look. They just kind of nodded and they said, we know what you're, we get it now, Burchett. It was sort of the, the vibe, which was a good thing. You know, you all are long-termers, you know, you're lifers in this thing and you get it. You get the fact that that we just get turned away at all the times. But now, when you have a bunch of arrogant United States congressmen who have their finger on the checkbook of this country, um, that that to me, I, I I felt more redeemed after the meeting. Actually, I and mean, I was ticked off because I, you all know, I'm ready. Let's get to the base. Let's get to the what Grush was talking about. But um, no, no shape, form, or fashion did we get anything. That grush and basically they. Um, let's see. Let me see how I can say this. Um, basically, didn't validify or condemn grush. Let's just leave it at that. And so, if that makes any sense to y'all, and For um, sure. and you know, and that's why I walked out to the press. They said, hey, of course, when I went in, they're like, Congressman, we talk to us when we walk out. And when you walk in, oh, sure, I will. And then um, me and another member, and it's I'm, I'm forgetting who it was now, uh, a Republican, um, and he's was not it Eric really. Eric Carlson. 
Yeah, yeah, Burleson, that's right. I'm sorry. He's a dear friend. I'm sorry, I just drew a blank. But he's not really, I would call him a, he, he's a skeptic, but he's a, he's a good skeptic. He asked the right, he's not condemning anyone. He comes from a certain subset and I come from a different and we, and we, we, we both um, have the same similar religious belief system so we can build from there. But, but the, you know, I, I left there not knowing anything more than I did when I walked in. And, um, but then again, like I say, you hit the next button, boys. Let's get to the next one. Let's get to the next one. And with this new speaker, if it's okay, if I can talk a little bit about him, we got a new speaker in the house. And um, it's funny, Luna, she's a, she's a bull in the China shop. She, she's like, let's get him over here, Bertie. Call him over here. You know, I said, hey, Mike, or, you know, uh, Speaker Johnson, whatever. I said, Speaker, and he came over. We were working on something else. And, and he, uh, he, in fact, said that we, we we're going to pursue this thing. And whether it's in the select committee or not, I'm not too hung up on all that um, because they'll lie to a select committee just like they'll lie to a full committee. So uh, the more more people we get in there, maybe is a better thing. Maybe the select committee is uh, is asking too much, but um, we can still do field hearings as well, which means, I mean, that's just off the chart. I mean, that, that's off the chain. You know, that that's just me or Luna or Matt or, or um, Jared says, hey, let's do a field hearing and we just call one and we just show up and call people in and, and just let it go. And so the new, speaker, the new speaker has given you a thumbs up in pursuing the topic. Oh, yes, sir. 100 percent. 100 percent. And it doesn't hurt, hurt that I was one of the eight that voted to, um, you know, extradite the last speaker. So um, that doesn't hurt one bit. And, and Matt as well. So um, we got a, um, I think we got a, we got a good base to work on. We're going to be in good shape there. We just, but the next hearing, I hope we can maybe, it'll be a little more mundane. I mean, but I think it's important that we get some of these Department of Defense people in and start separating the wheat from the chaff. You know, we got to, we got to make sure we get the, um, uh, let's start eliminating stuff that, that we don't need to keep talking about. And um, and let's get some people on record, and and I think I think that's going to be a good way to start because you all, as you know, you you were kind enough to to brief me on the, before the last one, and and we were able to ask some really tough questions, good questions, and uh, and I think with this, if we can we can get three or four people in these departments and get them under oath talking, maybe we can get a little closer. So I, I just don't think it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be an ongoing process and, and that's what we got to have. But it, like I said, many times until somebody walks out of one of those quasi labs with, with undeniable evidence, you and I are still going to, y'all are still going to have a podcast that's watched a lot. And then, <laughs> um, and, you know, it's going to keep, it's like finding Bigfoot. If they found Bigfoot, the show would go off the air. So unfortunately, <laughs> Fortunately, unfortunately, went off the air. I knew those guys are all buddies of mine. But um, but anyway, I, I think um, we've done we've done some good work, and, it, and it's primarily due to folks like yourself that have been carrying this torch for years. So, well, it was a, it was a huge success and kind of a cultural phenomenon when you put together and and you know we assisted, but getting that last hearing really moved the needle with public consciousness. What I hear you saying. And I, I know it to be true is that you'd like to have more hearings that you're going to fight for more hearings. Uh, obviously, you're going to have some Department of Defense individuals, but I do believe there's a good chance that we get some direct eyewitness testimony from people who have been involved in these legacy programs to be part of those hearings. Obviously, they'd be taking a great risk if they're still employed, but there are people willing to talk and come forward. So we will work hopefully on that again, together to get the right people in front of you and, and other members of Congress to really crack the egg here. Absolutely. And we got, I guess, our time frames until next year at election time, because if they beat me over this and other issues, uh, then you'll have to find you a new uh, somebody else. But uh, A new champion? Like no way, man. We're with you. <laughs> I know that, but I appreciate it. Everybody's been really kind across the country. Actually, I get something every day, every well, day. 
Let me ask you this is um, there's a little bit that has been said about what happened in that room. So I, it sounds like you had, you know, from AOC to you, you know, both Republican and Democrat, you really did achieve a bipartisan attempt at getting information in this skiff. So that that was a huge win. Now, whether they can confirm or, or, or they or they can't confirm certain things, you you really got everybody in that room. And you got him listening and he asked some questions. One thing that came out of that room, it was Representative Burleson, your friend, who said something. I'd like to get a translation from you. Um, Representative Burleson with you said, and this was reported on Matt Laszlo's Ask a Poll, by the way, if anybody wants to look it up. He said, it appears somebody has discovered something, some advanced form of propulsion. Now, that is a statement. Discovered something? What did he mean by that? Well, and this is where I have to uh, do what I'm sworn to do. I, I, I can't really comment on that. I, um, I think it's it was stated, and I know Matt well, uh, Laszlo pretty well. You know, he's he he grabs me every day about this issue. Everybody be talking about something else, and in the big yeah. scrum, you know, the the press, there's 15 people, and he sticks a mic and says. Hey, what about this uh, UFO situation out of some, you know, it's like, everybody's like, oh no. And I'm like, yeah, well, hey, yeah, no, I love about. it. He really gets in there and asks the questions, but you know, yeah. it has been admitted by your colleague that again, it appears somebody has discovered something, some advanced form of propulsion. Yeah. propulsion. Did you walk, let me ask you this way. Did you walk away from what you heard thinking, this is some foreign advanced technology from a known nation, or did you come out of that understanding that this is this is UFO, man? This is something we don't understand. That was one part I, I and I'm not going to tell you which way I thought they were going, but I thought they tried to divert the the question, divert the answer. Okay, that was probably the one out of that whole thing, and I and I so I won't disclose which way they tried to divert, but you can you can sort of guess. Yeah, sure. It was, um, you know, it was, and I saw some eyes, you know, kind of turn and at, at, at that at that portion too. So um, right, it, co it comes I, to a I, point I, where, I, where people say it's an advanced technology from another nation. The problem is UFOs have been around way before we even had a Pentagon. So we come into that conundrum and try to explain the UFO phenomenon as advanced tech. Yeah, they. Um, I think they just tried to skirt around that question is what I think. And they, um, so, um, yeah, I know I you got to be careful here. Yeah, I, I, I wish, I wish we'd had them out, out of the skiff and in a hearing and I can talk about it a little more. So right. I'm just going to leave it at that. But Dr. Was, Sean uh, Kirkpatrick of arrow had his news event this week where they unveiled their big new website, which it seemed like if they had gone to a junior high school and got a 14 year old kid, they could have designed that in a week. Um, does Dr. Kirkpatrick still have credibility with members of Congress? And do you think he'll still be there in a year? I think he does with some. Um, but the ones in that room, I'd say is be very limited, George, to be honest with you. I think they've, uh, the folks that are digging into this or see what's going on over there and they understand it. Now, but how do we get to that point where we, we uh, start removing people and getting people in there that'll that'll cooperate. I, I don't. I'm not sure of the process of that. I don't know how much pressure he'll get, but he's apparently he's catching a lot of flack on that, and it's earned. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know where I am on it. So, yeah, you're I, experiencing. I, I, I couldn't predict when he's gone, though. Well, I guess I got some news on that for a little later, but basically you're experiencing pulling the UFO teeth. You just want to know, you know, what is going on with this UFO problem and you're experiencing pushback and obfuscation. I mean, that's fair to say, right? Like as you dig deeper, you get a skiff, you start getting information from people. You're you're not being told the truth. That's obvious, right? Yeah. And 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 I want to make it really clear, these are intelligence committees. I feel like there's, and I've talked to members of the intelligence committee, you know, asked them what they think, and they'll say, you know, we just don't know. But the uh, the people in the in the in, 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 in the intelligence committee is a is a fraternity, really. They're a tight knit bunch of bunch of folks, both parties, 
And there's an arrogance associated with that. And they, you know, they're not going to let us know what's going on and they're, and they're going to keep it quiet and they'll leak out to the, their people that they need to leak it out to. But then you have the leadership or the, or the people that are in charge of those committees. They know a lot more and they're not saying, and there's a real, and that's a real danger in that, I feel like. And, and honestly, the reason people are on the intelligence committee, uh, from what I've seen, not all of them, but, but a lot of them, it's because how much money they can raise for each party. And that's how they get some plum position. You get to travel a lot and you get to privilege to see a lot of things. And, and I don't think it hurts their stock portfolio one bit either. So um, I've got some great concerns there. Right. You, it's like, you, go ahead. Go ahead, George. You still look forward to having David Grush appear before you in a skiff, right? 100%. And we've been trying to work that out. That's just a, that's another onion we're peeling. And you get to one point and then, then you get to another. And, and um, that's where I go back to my friend, um, um, Jared Moskowitz. He, um, yeah, he, he drilled down in that pretty good, I felt like. I know David Gresh wants to get with you guys. If you have the clearance and authority to hear what he has to say, he's laid it all out to, through the ICIG, Intelligence Community Inspector General. But, you know, this is information he believes it's a crime against the American population to not have this information out. If what he's saying is true, it's world changing. And I know you're fighting to get that information, but it seems like everything that, that you try to do is being obfuscated by the keepers of the secrets. And that's gotta be frustrating. It is very, it is very frustrating. That's why when the dust settles on our new speaker, we're gonna go in and have a heart to heart with him, several members, and talk to him about this situation. And um, that's the beauty of this guy. He's kind of come out of nowhere, so he's not beholden to any of this, any of the, the K Street lobbyists or the war pimps at the Pentagon, as I like to call them. He, um, He's really just beholden to Congress and his people back home. And um, I think that's going to serve us well in the UFO community. I really do. You expressed some concerns that maybe this will be used against you in your next election. Has that been already been raised? Is somebody in your district running against you on UAPs? Well, oddly enough, a member of Congress, um, a chairman, apparently has been calling around the district very powerful chairman who has uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of friends at the Pentagon and then those departments um, has been calling around trying to get me opposition and you know and then the money follows of course the big boys and that's that's how they do and then they'll they'll you they'll have a tag it, it follows and it, you know I've been in this thing my whole life um, but you know then they'll start nitpicking little things and you'll see articles and and news stories, well-placed news stories, uh, you know, it's got their fingerprints all over it and that's what they'll do. Yeah. I've, and I've actually had conversations with, I guess, former supporters um, who are well-heeled and have brought up the, the UFO issue with me as they um, told me they weren't going to be going to be helping me anymore. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a real deal. I mean, I knew it going in, but, um, but, they they just trying to compound it now. And, you know, politics is a funny game. Uh, it's a year away, I guess, the elections are. And that's a, that's, that's a hundred lifetimes. So who knows what will happen between now and then. But, yeah, it's a real concern for me and my family just that, you know, but I, it, it's not like I'm going to back off on it either. So it just kind of ticks me off, makes me want to dig. It means that we're getting we're, we're closer than maybe we give ourselves credit for. Those guys who keep the secrets have a lot of power on Capitol Hill, do they not? They do. Um, they do. And you, that's why you see people walk at, walk into here making 170000 They walk out of here worth 10 or $15 million. Um, there's, you know, the insider trading thing, knowing, knowing when certain battles or certain conflicts are getting ready to start um, and what type of conflict that'll be so you can invest in that sort of technology. And yeah, it's big power. It's it's not hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's millions, if if not billions, of dollars of influence, and they can, you know, a million dollars in a race like mine is a is a huge thing, and that's that's what they do, and that's how they stay in power, and 
That's why we got to keep fighting. I mean, man, we got to keep fighting. That just makes me madder and madder. I want to fight more, actually. You know, what, what David Grush brought forward is, is very credible. This is a guy whose job it was to look at these SAPs or special access programs dealing with UAP. That was his job. And he discovered misappropriation of funds and hidden UFO yep. programs. I mean, what is it? That, do you see his comments and, and the credibility of David Grush? Do you see like what he has brought forward as, as really important? Like how would this change things if you were able to get the information you're seeking? Well, I, it would also it would it would change things incredibly. And that's a great question because it could for, help us formulate questions that we needed to ask and of people we needed to ask it of and um, and possibly. You know, if you could catch somebody off guard in one of these questions and and then they'd have to tell the truth, uh, I think it would be imperative to this mission that we're on. It would it would open a lot of doors and close some, frankly, that we don't need to be going down because a lot of people are, you know, everybody walks out of those meetings and they're going a hundred different directions, Jeremy. And um, and you got a good reporter right there. I guess I, I don't know if they were calling you a reporter, George, is a is a slap in the face or is a compliment. I meant it as a compliment, but you know, yeah, you, I don't know. you get the sources. I mean, I've been following you since I was a kid and you're nobody's ever questioned your credibility because you document things and you get sources. And that's exactly what we've got to do. And, uh, no, they question you, but you, you bust their ass when they yeah. do it because you've got your sources, you know, I expect a few of them are in some of those files right behind you there in those pages. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, you, you get what I'm talking about. If we could just, I, I think if we could just get that information, some of those key points that he made, right, and then we could call some of those people in and say, what exactly it, what exactly are you all doing in this lab? What is, what is, who are these people? And if they're not, why are they on your payroll? Yeah, it's a good point. And, and, is, and is the government funding? your research, because it is, and we've got, we've got a potential for FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, and getting to the bottom of it. Right. So the goal is oversight. I mean, what you're fighting for is to find out what the U.S. government is doing with this UAP issue, with these exploitation programs, which we now know exist, but finding out exactly what they're doing and having oversight. That's your goal, right? Correct. 100%. 100%. And, and you know, they, and kind of this group is arrogant bunch. Some of these folks in Congress, some of them in, in the Pentagon and other places. I mean, they pat you on the head and say, well, you really just don't need to know. I mean, literally, that's what they tell presidents. You don't need to. You all know that. You've seen the documentation. It's it's not a myth. It's true. They basically have told presidents no. And, uh, right. and they just it, we can't continue down this path. I think the public demands it now. And now the opinion polls, that's the best thing that's happened. Y'all have kept the heat on for so long that so many people are starting to say, what the heck is that up in the sky? And what maybe what was my uncle talking about or my aunt that saw something over their farm in the 50s or 60s, you know? And then, um, and, and now the opinion polls are changing. And that's why you see people like NASA saying we need robust research, you know? <laughs> Ro what the, that means more money. They see more money. And that's, you know, you and I, the three of us, we don't need any more money. We just need them to turn loose those dadgum files. <laughs> right. So there is a, a hope here, which is that people call it the Schumer, um, uh, you know, amendment or legislation about U UFOs or UAP. But actually, Senator Rounds contributed to that uh, incredibly. Have you talked to Senator Rounds about the UAP issue? Because I know he helped formulate, forge, spearhead, and push through this new legislation to shake up uh, the, the, the contractors and the industry that's been holding these programs and pry out of their hands this UFO technology. You can read it right there in those amendments. Are you, um, do you feel excited that that legislation should pass? And, and do have you ever talked to, to Senator Rounds about the UFO I, issue? I, I haven't. I'm just, honestly, I'm afraid of it because I'm just afraid it's another level of bureaucracy. I'm going to go back and read it again. I just don't want another layer of bureaucracy. Maybe that's what it's going to take to pry it loose from their cold, dead fingers. But um, I'm just afraid they're going to provide, a, it's going to be a clearinghouse and they're going to say, this is a, um, you know, it's a national, is it a national security issue? And they're going to say, 
that 95 percent of it they're going to say what i found when i've asked about specifics um they said oh it's a national security issue Burchett. i can't i can't let you see that or whatever or it can't be made available to the public and that's what i mean they just put that stamp on it arbitrarily and then we we end up locking up more files um than we had before. And then it becomes a clearinghouse for all the other departments who maybe want to do the right thing. And if we get if we get somebody that thinks like we do in there, that's great. But it's kind of like religion. If you're preaching, if you're if you're preaching my religion, it's okay, but I ain't so sure about yours. You know? So <laughs> what do you think about oh go ahead, George. Sorry. Oh, no, I can't talk. So Okay. <laughs> what you know, what do you think about these leaks? You know, George and I will be releasing as much information as we can, you know, throughout this new year in a responsible manner. You know, but what do you think do you think leaks are gonna play a big role in in how UAP are kind of understood by the public? Because we're not getting much from our government that's supposed to represent us at this point. No, I, I don't again, we're gonna keep going down this path and we're gonna get lucky occasionally, maybe get a couple singles and doubles, but the triples and the home runs are going to come from somebody in one of these, these uh, uh, not necessarily a government agency, but these contractors that just says, hey, enough is enough on this stuff. We've got it. We're hiding it. We're holding it back for whatever reason, economics or others. And uh, this could this could help a lot of people in this world, but we're not going to let it out because, you know, we, we have to be able to control it. And uh, and maybe their conscience will play on and they'll, they're the ones that are going to walk out. With, with that undeniable information. And then then it'll be it'll be too late. You know, you people like you all will have that on the internet within within minutes. And um, before they'll be able to be discredited or fall down an elevator shaft or something like that. So um, I would hope that that that's what's the leaks are really where it's at, as far as I'm concerned. Not necessarily the government leaks. I don't want to not create any espionage or supporting that, but but in these businesses that are that have government contracts that are that I think are hiding this stuff. Well, Tim, stay away from elevator shafts and let us know. Keep us in the loop. Yeah, I've never ridden. I, I don't ride the elevator much in this building. Uh, when they when COVID hit, um, they closed the gym down. Of course, you know, I live in my office, my my elaborate um, sleeping arrangement here on my couch. But um, I found I found the elevator went down to the basement. They had a shower down there. For the custodian, so I would sneak in there about six o'clock every morning for COVID when COVID hit because they closed the gym down. But Dad Gummin, everybody else found out about it too. So I was <laughs> like, my hot, I, I ran out of hot water a lot of mornings. So <laughs> anyway, but thank you guys. Thanks for keeping the pressure on, man. It's a, and it's really an honor that you all, you and I are friends. You all, the three of us are buddies because I've, I followed y'all for quite some time. More so, George, you, I guess back in the seventies, back when me and Jeremy were probably just kids. So I'm a little older than Jeremy, but anyway, it's, it's just a real pleasure to call you all my friends. And when I'm out in the community and UFO people ask me if I know you all, it's just a pleasure to say, yeah, they're buddies of mine. They're Definitely great. buddies. And, and Tim, you've become part of history when it comes to the UFO thing. Never before has a hearing happened like that. I mean, what was achieved with what we did there really changed the entire dynamic. And I really hope that through our friendship and through trying to find the truth together, that we'll get closer. We not, might not achieve the ultimate goal within the next six months. You know, it's going to it's a journey. Right. But if you keep fighting as much as you can, I think we're pretty powerful doing that, man. I, I think we are. And the people are behind us and the night and the and the government understands the people are behind us. Those opinion polls are are strong and that they they read them. They know them and they know that they've got to they've got to start producing something because the public's demanding it and the public's demanding it. Those folks, y'all have been carrying the torch for 20 or 30 years. And, and that's cool. So thank you all. A couple of things. It's always great to talk to Tim Burchett. He's it's just a lot of fun to talk to. And he tells you as much as he can without getting himself into trouble. I think of anything, the headline that comes out of that is the new Speaker of the House is on board, at least according to Tim Burchett. He's on board with general UAP transparency. It sounds like they have an ally then in the Speaker position. That's good. That's a good development. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. So th th that is a huge takeaway that, that there's, you know, there's a sympathy to getting to this information. Look, I, I'm really grateful we got people like Representative Birch just really being a pit bull about it. I know he was frustrated. I know going into that skiff, which by the way, like AOC was in, a bunch of people were in, 
And, you know, they, they brought people to them to brief them that didn't have all the information. Now, we, we knew that was going to happen. We were, we were hoping there'd be more information. I know it was frustrating. Nothing to see here move on, kind of. But, uh, you know, look, that kind of resistance makes people like Representative Virtue just more hungry for the truth. Yeah, I think after a while, the message is they, it, it, it's seeping out to other members of Congress is they're not going to tell this information to members of Congress. They don't think Congress has a right to know. And it's becoming pretty clear that they're not going to cough it up unless Congress makes them cough it up. That's going to continue. That, that's the battle moving forward. Yeah, I, I like that Representative Burchett just keeps saying, look, this might take some leaks. This might take some leaks to journalists. It might take information to move the ball forward. And I'm pretty confident that that, uh, that, that will continue to happen. And as long as it's responsible for us to put out and, in, and for the public good, then, then we will keep doing so. I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the shoot downs. Because um, look, if you, if you remember, George, uh, when you and I were first talking about this idea that, no, we, we do fire upon UAP, I said it on some national broadcast and, oh my gosh, did I get hate for that? What is he saying? He's got no proof we shoot at UAP. What is he doing? He can't just say that. Well, right after that, you saw this huge shoot down over U.S. soil, of one of the Chinese spy balloon, but then also of, of unidentified, you know, they might be balloons or whatever, but they're unidentified. Um, we recently in the news, we saw that our friend um, Ross Colthart with our other friend, Chris Mellon, said that there was possibly another, I'll call it an intercept attempt because they didn't fire upon these like eight or nine different UAP February 1st. So that was three days before the Chinese spy balloon shoot down. Now, look, honestly, I, I had never heard about that. I had never heard about that from anybody. I've heard about the videos, exactly what's in the videos. I'm completely aware of what's in those videos, but I never heard about this February 1st shoot down or intercept attempt. You know, me neither. I didn't. I mean, look, I trust Ross Coltart's reporting. He's a good journalist. He crosses his T's and dots his I's. I further trust that story because there's Chris Mellon on camera, on the record, saying, yeah, he heard it from someone who was in a position to know that there was another incident, that there was a shoot down. That's money in the bank for me. I mean, I, I give that a lot of credence. OK, cool. I mean, look, I am hyper interested. You know, if Arrow's going to release some footage, apparently, of, of those other shoot downs, that would be phenomenal. But again, like I know exactly what's in that footage, like per second, per minute, and it's not anything that's going to move the needle or, or explain anything. So I'm very curious about that. I'm also curious to see, I know Christopher Sharp from Liberation Times is also really on it. He's going back and forth with NORAD, trying to find out what might happen on February 1st. So I feel like we're going to learn more if any of that is true. But from the very beginning, you and I kind of imagined that what we were going to find out is that none of these were true UAP that we've either shot at or that we've tried to intercept. Maybe we're wrong. It'd be interesting to find out. Well, you know, this is a tricky topic and, and people do make mistakes. We have made mistakes. We will make more mistakes because we are human beings. But our reporting has been pretty solid on the cases that we've shared with people. Um, I'd like to know what they shot down, what, if anything, was shot down on February 1st. And hopefully we're going to hear more about it. But we do know for a fact that shoot downs do happen. Do we not? We do. So we should talk about that for just a second. So the, the February 1st was an attempted intercept from what I understand. So they didn't fire upon it. They couldn't catch these things, which, you know, we've heard about with the UAP. So let's find out more about that as time goes on. But as far as like shoot downs, yeah, man, people were like really mad at us. But I think next episode, we should really get into that. We should talk about shoot downs. We should try to provide some evidence that you and I might have that this is something that occurs and why shoot downs of unidentified might occur in the first place. Like, what is the parameter in which we decide to shoot at unknown objects? So, yeah, I think let's let's save that for next episode. I think it'll be a fun one. And yeah, thanks for your time, man. I hope you're feeling better. And I know this is going to be an interesting, you know, two months when it comes to UAP or next month and a half is going to be really interesting. So yeah. pay attention. Never have so few had so much to tell, but could say so little.
following this in the weaponized presentation of Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, Dark Horse Entertainment, and Cadence 13 Studios. Available now for free on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your shows.